All right, welcome to part four. So this should probably be the last part. I think it should probably be pretty quick. So all we need to do now is actually add this component to our character and then call a couple functions in it to get things to work. So if we go to our third person character again, inside of our handle radial damage um, is where we're gonna wanna do the majority of the remaining work. So the first thing we need to do is add this component to our character. So we'll hit add up here and then search for our floating combat text. So this is our C, C++ component that we've added. So we wanna click this guy. And then over here on the right, hopefully this will all start to come together now. You can see in the details panel, we have a floating combat text component category. And then we have our three properties that we added, right? So these three properties right here are these three guys over here. It's these three, right? And the reason they're showing up is because we have them set to edit defaults only, which means we can edit them in the details panel. And then we also have them to allow private access to true since we're in a private category. So the 40 and the 100 are kind of already set to pretty good values, but you can change them if you want to, if you think they need spaced out differently. But the really important thing here is we need to specify which actor we want it to spawn. So if we hit this drop down here, we'll see BP floating text actor. Now, if you see, um, if you didn't add that abstract keyword, you would actually see the C++ class here as well. So I'm talking about this one, um, this guy. So since we put abstract here, it's not actually showing a floating text actor. It's only showing the blueprint version of it or the child version of it because we have this set to abstract, which means we can't possibly spawn an instance of this. So it doesn't even bother showing it in this list. So that's kind of another reason why we did that. So we wanna make sure we select this guy and then in our handle radial damage, we can make use of it. So we wanna do two things here. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure, or well, we wanna find this, um, this component, because again, you gotta think about it here. So we're on the server right now and we are, currently taking damage from somebody, right? So we don't wanna show, um, we don't wanna add the text to our combat text component, right? We wanna add it to the, whoever did damage to us, right? Because only they should be able to see the text. So we don't wanna do anything with this. We wanna get the, we wanna get the component of the guy who's attacking us, which is the damage causer here. Um, so to do that, we can say, uh, right click and say get damage causer, which again is the guy who's attacking us. And then we wanna find that component on him. So we'll say get component by class. And we wanna search for his loading combat text component. And then we wanna take this and we wanna promote it to a local variable. And the reason we're doing a local variable is because we're inside of a function and we only need access to this variable inside of this function. So let's rename this to, uh, so attackers, attackers, um, loading combat text, just to be super clear, <laughs> we'll name it that. So this is the attackers floating combat text. So once we have that, we can then down here, drag this guy in, get, right click, convert to validated get. So this is gonna both get it for us and it's gonna make sure it's valid. So if it is valid, then we wanna call that add function. So I forget what I called it, add text, this one. So add floating text client. So if we click on this, this is calling this function over here. Uh, this function right here, the one that adds the specified text at the specified location, right? And you'll notice we've specified client here, right? So if you actually look at this guy, it will tell you replicated to owning client. So we're basically telling the owning client, so whoever owns this floating combat text component, which of course is the attacker. So we're telling the attacker to go ahead and add some text to his floating combat text component. So the text we wanna add is going to be based on whatever damage gets passed in. So we can right click and say, get damage. And then we wanna convert this to a text, which Unreal will do for us. If we just drag that over. And then we can hit this drop down button to get a few more options of how we want it to convert it, like how we want it to round it, or if we want it to use grouping. The only thing I'm gonna do here is just get rid of the fractions. That way we don't see decimal places. So I'm gonna set this to zero. And then for the world location, it's going to be um, the location of this guy who's being attacked, right? Cause we want it to show above his head. So we'll drag off this and say get actor 
Uh, get active location, there it is, okay. And then I think that's all we need to do here. So we compile and save, and we go back to the event graph. So we got this hooked up, okay. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Hopefully it just works. So if we come over here and we hit the server, there we go, it's popping up above its head. And you can see each time we add a new one, it pops up even higher. And then let's try it the other way around. So let's have the server attack this guy, and there we go. So only the person who's doing the attack can see the numbers. Um, if you wanna adjust the scaling of things, you can of course click on the floating combat text, and maybe you think it's too far above his head, let's move it down, and maybe you think it's too, too spaced out. You can lower these numbers and do it again. And you can see it kind of changes how it works. Now they're more stretched together and they're kind of not quite above his head yet. So you can adjust those as needed. You can obviously also change the widget to change the colors of things if you want. Um, there's a lot of things you could do. Um, the other thing I did as part of this demo was I added that little blue box. And I'm gonna do that as well, just to show you guys how you can kind of reuse this in case you're still a little bit confused, like this box over here. Um, if you're not interested in seeing that, then feel free to leave now. Uh, if you do leave now, I just want to say thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to join our Discord server. There's a link in the description if you're interested in that. I also have a Patreon if you want to support me there. That's always appreciated. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Um, but if you are hanging around to see how I do this blue box thing, um, just to kind of see another example of it, then it will be pretty quick. So what we're going to do is come back here to our content folder. I'm just going to do this in the root directory here. And so we're going to make a new blueprint for this guy. And again, this will be very quick. I'm not going to do anything fancy here. We'll say blueprint class, and then we'll select actor. We'll call it BP cube enemy. And then we'll open this guy up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set this guy um, in his, let's see, where is this button in Unreal Engine? Uh, class defaults, okay. So we wanna search for replicated, or I guess it's already here. So we wanna set this to replicate, so that way it replicates its movement. Well, and then also set replicate movement. Because we, we want this thing to replicate its movement so that it's in the same location on the server as it is on the client. So make sure you check both of those checkboxes. And then, whoops, back here in the mint graph, um, in the begin play, we just wanna add uh, that uh, component which interpolates its position from left to right, left to right, so it ping pongs back and forth. So we only want to do that on the server because we only want the server to be moving this thing. And it's just going to replicate its position to the client. And then we'll say add interp to movement component. And we'll just specify, let's see here, where are those little, oh, control points right here at the top. So we're going to add two of them. So hit that plus button twice. We'll just say from negative 200 to positive 200. And then there's somewhere in here, yeah, the behavior type, we want to set this to ping pong. So what that's going to do, if we play it real quick, actually, let's add the box. We'll add a static mesh. And then you can set this to whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Set it to the cube. So if we drag this guy into our scene here. And we press play. We should see it moving on the server, which we do and it should be moving on the client, and you can see they're in sync. And the reason they're in sync is because um, we've, we're only really moving it on the server. He's the only one that added that component to move it, and he's simply just replicating the position to the client. So now if we wanted to have this actor damageable or have any other actor in our game damageable, all we need to do is implement that radial damage thing. So we'll say uh, event radial damage, and then kind of just like we did before, we want to say, um, let me get the component for the floating text. So we'll say get component by class floating text. So we're getting the we're getting the floating combat text component of the guy who's attacking us, right? And we'll just keep this one simple and say is valid. That's not the one I wanted. I come on, delete. Why can't I delete? My delete key's broken. What's happening? Okay, I can't apparently I can't delete that. Um is valid this is what we want so if it is valid then we want to drag up this guy and say add floating text like we did before and then you can pass whatever you want here so what i did i don't know why i can't delete that what i did is i dragged off with this guy or actually i said um 
random int in range. Because so I want it to display some random words. And 0 to 3. And then I drag it off this and say select. And then I hook that up to here. And then I just added two more options. Now we have four options here. And then you can type whatever you want here. So you can say like, ouch, yikes, or no, or whatever you want. I don't know. And then for the world location, again, it's just to get accurate location. And just like that, we have another enemy that's going to make use of our system. So now if we compile and save, and we play it here, you can see they'll both be able to attack the box. Unless I did something wrong here. So if I press it, you can see it pops up above its head. And this guy, the server can't see it. So you can see the server can't see it. And if we do it on the server, only the server can see it. And you can see he's also hitting this guy as well. So we say both people at once. And there we go. So that is pretty much the tutorial. If you guys like the video, um, like I said before, I have a Discord if you want to join me there. Please leave a like and subscribe. I also have a Patreon if you want to support me there. Otherwise, I will see all you guys in the next video. Thanks.